know we all know someone who has had a stroke. Sometimes there's little to no long-term effects. Other times, it's a life-changing health crisis. And that was certainly the case for my first guest, a vibrant and sassy star of Lifetime's Little Women Atlanta. Today, Miss Juicy is here to talk about life after the stroke she suffered more than a year ago. Please welcome to the show, Miss Juicy. Thank you. Hey, I beautiful. really appreciate it. God bless you. God bless you. Truly, it is good to see you here and be able to tell your story, because I know this has been quite a year of recovery, right? Quite a year of rec recovery, you know. God is amazing, so. Every day. Let's, have, let's start. So this was April of 2022, right? Yes. Tell us what happened. April of 2022, um, just a typical, I had a, um, I had, um, I felt like I was having a migraine. Mm. And what I ended up doing, uh, as soon as I got in my house, I called my neighbor and I just passed out. Mm. Had you had migraines before? Had you had yes. Migraines? So you, that's why you were like, no biggie. Right. I just need to get home and lay down. Exactly. And I was at home. Mm -hmm. So I walked in the house. Yeah, I didn't think nothing of it. I was like, oh, well, let me go take me a pill or something. Mm -hmm. So I went in the house and I was like real tired. Mm -hmm. As soon as I made it inside the house and called my neighbor, I just passed out. So what do you know about what happened afterwards? Um, is that I, uh, what happened afterwards? Mm -hmm. uh, my neighbor came and she called 911. Again, my neighbor is a doctor as well. Oh, and so uh, she uh, called 911 and the um, ambulance came. Mm -hmm. And they tried to, they said I had passed completely out. And um, they tried to like revive me. They mm -hmm. said I. They said I was in a medical induced state. Oh, mm -hmm. But then he was like, "Well, no, she's too because she tried to. The um, they tried to put pressure on my chest, mm -hmm. and they like I raised up trying to fight. Oh, wow. like no, that hurt. So we know you're a fighter. So we know you were <laughs> you were in good shape in that sense. We knew you were coming back. But when right, it was all said exactly. and done, you this really did change your life, right? You ended up on a feeding tube having to learn basic motor skills all over again, right? Yes. Explain. Exactly. And see, they, the emergency room, they, they sent me to one hospital first, mm -hmm. went to the emergency room. I was completely out of it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even know where I was going. Mm -hmm. And so once I went to the emergency room, and um, uh, they had to, because I couldn't swallow, mm -hmm because I was under for so long. Oh, wow. So they had to put a feed into down my nose to my throat. Wow. I want to see. We've got, looks like this video of you in rehab. Okay. So this was, this has been a, quite a journey for you. Mm-hmm. And so I couldn't swallow, so I had to learn how to swallow and everything so I can get the nutrition that I needed. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I had to have the feeding tube. So I had the feeding tube removed and had a peg put in my stomach. And oh, so I could have a pig too. What was this like for you? I mean, we all knew you as active and vibrant, and this had to be the first real medical crisis to sort of put, just lay you down like this. Emotionally, what was this like for you in terms of recovering? I mean, to get to this point was uh, a wonderful step, but I know there were many steps before that. Yes, to get to that point, and it was very hard for me emotionally because um, I was very, independent right. going straight to a dependent person where everything had to be done for me mm -hmm. and to know that I couldn't do none of that stuff again. How long did it take you to get to the point where you're like you know what I'm gonna stop fighting I, and ask for help when you needed it because I know that's a big big deal for independent women essentially right and people who are living independently. It took me to get to go home before. I was still in the hospital trying to fight the nurses and well, not literally, not literally right. fight. No, them. I know what you mean, though. But you, I got it, I got it, and your body would say not exactly. Quite. And so, cause they had to teach me how to walk again. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I can do it on my own. But uh, my mom didn't want to see me fall, of course. Of no, course. No parents didn't want to see me fall. And I was like, let me fall. Let me try at least. So I can get up. Was this painful when we see you here, the, the steps, just having to get back up again and getting your breathing down? Did it feel like learning it all over again? 
It was. It was. It was very hard at first, mm -hmm. but when, by the time I got to this step, it was easier mm -hmm. for me. But I kept trying to rush. But mm. one thing I got to tell everybody: take your time. Yeah. If they say you need rest, rest. Believe it. Because you need all your rest to um, to take those steps. Mm -hmm. And so, and even to this day, a year later. It takes me longer to do things, mm -hmm. and I don't realize it that it do. I haven't got used to it yet. Yeah. So still your feisty self, I see. I can't help it. We I don't want you it. to stop being your feisty <laughs> self. Well, we're glad you're here to share this story and make people aware of how important it is to take this whole process seriously. So we're going to continue this conversation.